Good evening, and thank you for joining this live virtual telephone town hall meeting hosted by the Regional Transportation District, also known as RTD. I'm Roger, and I'll be your moderator tonight as we have a conversation with RTD Director Peggy Catlin, who represents District N. District N is entirely in Jefferson County and serves unincorporated Jefferson County, as well as the communities of Evergreen, Conifer, Morrison, Willow Springs, and Ken Carroll Ranch. We also have agency staff joining us to answer your questions. They'll introduce themselves during the call. Tonight, we'll be covering several topics, including customer safety initiatives, RTD's fair study and equity analysis, current recruitment efforts, and the next steps for Reimagine RTD. This is your opportunity to share thoughts and ask questions about RTD. If this is the first time on a virtual telephone town hall, here's how it works. To ask a question, just press star three on your telephone keypad, and you'll be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information and get you in the queue. Once the operator has your information, you'll be able to listen to the conversation until it's your turn. And then when I call your name, please repeat your question for our live audience. We're uh, hopeful of getting to as many questions as possible tonight, so please be brief when it's your turn. If you're participating online, you can ask a question or take part in polls directly from the streaming player. And if you're listening on the phone but want to list, uh, watch our slide deck, you can visit our YouTube page or our website. Uh, in addition to answering questions live, we will be asking four survey questions during the call. I'll explain that process later. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Director in District in Director Peggy Catlin. Thank you for joining us tonight, Director. Thank you, Roger. And I, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening and um, looking forward to our conversation tonight. Um, a little bit about District N. Um, you know, the overall RTD region is more than 2,300 square miles. And of the 15 districts, District N is the largest geographically. That also means that we are um, less dense in population than most of the other districts. But it's a very diverse uh, area. It includes the mountain communities of Conifer and Evergreen, as Roger suggested. It includes parts of Columbine and also slivers of Lakewood and Golden. And, and I have to tell you that based on the um, recent census that was done, this district is going to grow a little bit geographically as well. Um, I am excited to hear your questions and your comments tonight. And again, to remind you, if you have a question, please press star three or enter your questions or comments online. And Roger, before we dive into our first topic, I'd love to learn a little bit about the folks who joined us tonight. And I think we can accomplish that by asking our first survey question. Roger? All right, Director, that's a great idea. We'll do that. Uh, here, we're having a little technical problems. So I'm not able to open that survey question. There it is. OK, here we go. Uh, as Director Catlin just mentioned, we'd like to learn a little bit about those of you joining us tonight. It's easy to participate. All you need to do is use your telephone keypad to enter the number of your response. Uh, and if you're participating online, just click or type your response. Here is the question. How frequently do you ride RTD services? Press 1 for every day. Press 2 for once or twice a week. Press 3 for once or twice a month. Press 4 if you ride a few times per year and press five if you do not currently ride RG services. Go ahead and record your vote now. We'll share the results uh, in just a few minutes. And again, to ask a question or make a comment, press star three on your telephone keypad. There has been a lot of news coverage about safety concerns in the Denver metro area. I'd like to ask Steve Martingano, Interim Chief of RTD's Transit Police Division, to introduce himself and talk about what RTD is doing to help improve safety on transit and at transit at RTD stations and bus stops. Chief, welcome. Thanks, Roger. Um, as stated, I'm the interim chief of police. I've been a police officer for 29 years now, and in the last six and a half years, I've been within the uh, RTD Transit Police Division. So we've been hearing our customers' concerns about inappropriate behavior they are seeing around the city lately. As more and more people are utilizing transit, whether on their way back to the office 
or just in an eye of the town, safety and security is a top priority for RTD. Every day, staff works hard to make sure customers get to their destination safely. And what we are knowing is the area of concern is unwanted activities um, around Denver Union Station. So in April, we collaborated with the City County of Denver and RTD announced security enhancements that's going to be um, made to the bus concourse, which is the bus terminal underneath the uh, rail platforms. Currently in the short term, we're, we're fixing some lighting being replaced uh, to illuminate certain areas. Um, we are changing the entrance and exit points, which are going to be, some of them are going to be converted to emergency exits only to allow for better pedestrian flow. And then our deep cleaning is, is continuing and, and more consist, consistent. So um, it's just trying to make for a more comfortable environment. And that's, like I said, short term and long term, the next 12 to 16 months, the, bu the bus concourse is going to be converted to a paid fare area. And that's going to restrict access to only those who are using the buses to, uh, for their, commute, uh, their commutes. This involves a redesign of the whole entire area and it's projected to cost anywhere from 10 to $15 million. Now, we recognize that these are expensive upgrades and under the strategic priority of financial success, RTD takes very seriously the management of all of our financial resources. And this project is no exception. So what RTD plans to do is they are going to reinvest funds from the return of the approximately $29 billion credit risk premium, which, which is part of the original investment into Union Station, and that's going to be utilized to implement and construct design improvements and to enhance the customer experience when utilizing the station. Director, how can customers stay up to date on these changes? That's a, there's a lot going on down at Denver Union Station. Yeah, thanks, Roger. Um, RTD has launched a web page dedicated solely to providing updates on the facility enhancements at Denver Union Station. And that web page is rtd-denver.com forward slash projects forward slash restoring dash DUS. And I think I'm going to repeat that for you all. It's rtd-denver.com forward slash projects forward slash restoring dash DUS. Um, customers can also sign up for a newsletter on the website. But in addition to the enhancements at Denver Union Station, RTD is making other changes to ensure customers are safe when traveling. And, you know, I personally have had some of my constituents call about concerns that other transit areas, particularly Civic Center stations. So, Chief, could you please describe what some of these other changes might be? Yeah, absolutely, Director. So, um, I became the interim police chief in March, and the first thing I did was I broke our police division into four sectors. So, um, I placed officers on buses, rail, and then we have a community engagement officer, and then we also have our mental health and homeless outreach um, team. And they're all impact teams because already they've been meeting, uh, doing an immediate impact um, while they've been out there. So again, you know, you said about Civic Center, you will probably see our officers out there because it's a bus depot, um, you know, and, and they'll be tackling bus issues that are on Colfax and other areas. <clears throat> the mental health impact team is is uh, a combination of a, of our mental health clinicians and a homeless outreach coordinator, but we also have secondary employment with from officers from Denver, Aurora, as well as Thornton PD. And probably the faces you see the most is our contracted security officers. Um, so they are out there. We have our contractors currently with Allied Universal, and we have enough funding for 295 security officers, and those are probably the first faces that all of our customers see, whether they're riding the trains or the buses. These changes and partnerships with the local police departments have helped RTD quickly respond to customer safety issues. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, sometimes we get calls from customers who wonder why the commuter rail lines, including the A and G line, have armed security on each train, but light rail lines do not always have an officer or one of those private security personnel traveling. Why is that? You know, Roger, that's a great question. Um, the Federal Railroad Administration, which is also known as the FRA, uh, requires a second crew member to be present on all of our commuter rail vehicles. That includes the A-line to the airport, the G-line to Arvada, the N-line to Thornton, and the uh, 
uh, beeline to Westminster. Um, but they do not require a second crew member for our light rail vehicles. So while we don't actually have security personnel on every single light rail vehicle trip, uh, like I had mentioned, we do utilize our rail impact team and also our security officers to ride the trains and be on the platforms daily. They check fares and ensure customers are traveling safety, safely. Um, but you know, I will tell you that the most important tool RTD has is our free RTD Transit Watch app. It's available on both Apple and Android platforms. It allows customers to report security and safety concerns easily and discreetly. Now, if you are unable to uh, download an app or don't have a smartphone, you could go ahead and call our RTD Transit Police directly at 303-299-2911. For those that don't know, RTD Transit Police has two dispatch centers, so anytime you utilize the app or call, it will go directly to one of the two dispatch centers and will send help out immediately. <clears throat> when you do utilize either the phone or the app, please be specific as possible. Um, include your location, any descriptions, as well as um, letting us know what the situation you're seeing. Because every time you go ahead and submit an incident report, you are helping our team resolve situations and also helping provide us the information to determine where we should be focusing our resources. Thank you, uh, Chief. Again, you can download the Transit Watch app on both your Apple and Android smartphones. And if you're like my mother and don't have a smartphone, you can reach RTD's Transit Police at 303-299-2911. Before we uh, get to some questions, here are the answers to our first survey question. Again, we asked, how frequently do you ride RTD services? 43% do not currently ride RTD. 18% ride a few times per year, 15% once or twice a month, and 12% each for once or twice a week and every day. Thank you for uh, participating in those uh, that first survey question. We certainly appreciate customers who choose to take transit. It's environmentally friendly and helps reduce both pollution and congestion. And for, for those of you who don't currently use transit, RTD really is working hard to improve services. So give us a try. All right, let's go to uh, our first question, and that came in online from Raul, and he asks, what should I do if I see someone using drugs or doing something illegal on a bus or train? You want to Roger, go ahead and, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. Um, so again, if you see anything on a bus or train, um, if you utilize that RTD Transit Watch app, that is the, the most important tool, and it goes directly to our police dispatch. Um, or if, again, if you can't, if you don't have the app, please call 303-299-2911. If you're, you know, I can't reiterate enough to be as specific as possible, so we know how uh, who to send. Um, so, you know, as long as you give us all the details, let us know your location. We will go ahead and send somebody. If we can't send someone internally, we'll reach out to the local police departments and ask for their assistance. All right. Thank you, uh, Chief, for that. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, just press star three on your telephone keypad. And if you're participating online, you can ask a question or take part in the polls directly from the streaming player. Uh, we're going to move on to our next topic for tonight's call, RTD's Fair Study and Equity Analysis. Uh, Bill Troy has joined us. Bill, would you introduce yourself and provide us an update? Uh, thanks, Roger. Again, this is Bill Soroy. Um, my title is I'm a Senior Manager of Transit Oriented Communities in the Planning Department, um, and I am part of the project management team for this effort, um, which we uh, initiated um, at the beginning of this year. Um, but really, one of the reasons why we initiated this study was that we've heard a lot from um, our customers about our fares and about kind of two areas, one being too expensive, and the other one being too complicated or confusing to use. So um, at the direction of our general manager and CEO, Deborah Johnson, we decided to initiate this fare study to take a comprehensive look at our fare structure and determine, you know, what kind of changes can we make to respond to some of those concerns as well as, you know, deal with some of the issues that we've been faced with, with the, the impact of the pandemic and the reduction in ridership. So it is going to be, a, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for people to get involved. Um, again, we're looking to really focus on the customer and customer input 
Um, we want to, um, we've hosted, to date, we've hosted two public meetings that we had in May, or excuse me, at the end of April. Um, we're going to have two additional uh, public meetings at the end of this month, um, I believe on the 23rd and 29th of June. Um, one will be in English and one will be in Spanish. Um, in addition to that, we have, we have a number of feedback panels, and then we have a great website for those of you who want to provide us input um, directly um, on your opinion about FAIRS and you want to get more information on the FAIR study as it progresses. Um, so, again, we invite you to provide your feedback. Um, we, we have, we've, um, I guess another thing that we've done is initiated a, uh, completed a, um, a survey um, online that we got over 2,400 responses about kind of people's perspectives on our current FAIR system. Um, we're currently evaluating those results and we'll hope to get that out here in the next little bit. But again, it, it's really an opportunity um, for people to give their input on our fares and our fare system. So with that, um, I'll just turn it over to Director Catlin, who I think you may have a question or two. Yeah, Bill, I was just wondering, um, you've done quite a bit on the community engagement side so far, and I listened to the um, some of the public meetings online, but I was just wondering if there's more opportunity um, for community engagement, or is the FAIR study over now? And where is RTD in the process currently? Yeah, thank you, Director Kellen. I mean, we're, we're, we're just kind of completed our first phase. Which our first phase was really focused on getting that feedback on our current FAIR structure. What, what are people's pain points? What are their, you know, their likes and their dislikes about our FAIR system? Um, so that we can have that as a baseline as we go into this next phase, we're, we're, we're going to start to look at different kind of bigger picture ideas about what we may look at. Um, some ideas that we're looking at in terms of how do we simplify our discount system as we have three levels of discount related to um, seniors, um, youth, and then our, our low income, our live program. So we're looking how do we maybe consolidate that, make it more simple. Also, you know, the potential for lowering fares and how do we make access to our past programs easier. So, so those are some of the topics that we're wrestling with now. Um, we're going to get some more feedback, um, as we said, like I said, at the end of the month when we have a couple of public meetings. Um, in addition to that, like I said, we'll, we'll be posting more information on the website as we, we, as we um, get it together, and then people will be able to react to that. And later this fall, we'll have an opportunity to, for, for people to um, weigh into specific alternatives that will look at trade-offs for kind of packaging things like consolidating discounts, potentially lowering some of our fares or consolidating fares, and some of those other things, um, just, just so people can understand kind of what the more detailed fiscal and um, ridership impacts would be of different ways of approaching our fare system. So with that, and then, and then the, the kind of the last bit will be once we kind of have, get, have that feedback early next year, we'll be actually taking kind of what we say is our preferred alternative out for feedback um, in terms of potential uh, implications of that, and then ultimately, based on that feedback, refine it and take it to the board in the spring of next year for adoption. Thanks, Bill. Um, you know, I know if customers are interested in offering additional feedback, um, where can they where can they go to learn more about this process? And and maybe you could give our, our website information. Um, so that sure. people can be well informed. Yes. Um, so yeah, our website is our best is your best um, vehicle to get information, and that website is www.rtd-denver.com/fairstudy. Or if you just get on the RTD website and hit Fair Study, it will take you right there. So again, it has information about the process, upcoming meetings, and we will be posting um, new information like you know, survey results and other things when we get it together, we will, those things will be posted on the website. Um, as a reminder, we do offer um, discounts um, for those of you who may be youth, there's a 70% discount, people with disabilities and seniors get a 50% discount, um, as well as people that qualify as low income, and, and those are done through the state's peak system, um, and those, they get a 40% discount. So you can get information about those programs as well as 
um, some of our other fair products on um, our, again, on our website at www.rtd-denver.com, fairs slash passes slash discount fairs. So that's some of the information. If you want to get more information on that, please hit the head of the website. All right, thank you, Bill and Director. Uh, let's take a moment to ask our second survey question. Again, for callers, uh, please use your telephone keypad to enter the number of your response. And if you're participating online, just type or click your response. Here is question number two. Do you believe that RTD fares should be more affordable even if it results in less service? Press one for yes, press two for no, and press three if you're not sure. If, uh, record your vote now. I'll share the results with you in just a moment. And we're going to go to the phone line and, and hear from Richard. Richard, go right ahead. Hi, good evening. This question is for Dr. Caitlin. Um, when was the last time you used an RTD bus and train and how was your experience? Thank you for that question, Richard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I've been spending quite a bit of time lately up in the Black Hills of South Dakota, so I um, haven't been in the metro area uh, that much lately. That said, I did travel out of town um, a couple of weeks ago, and unfortunately, my husband had an accident that left him on crutches and in a boot the day of our travel plans. And normally, we take the, one of the light rail lines, Denver Union Station, transfer to the A line, and then head out to the airport. But I decided to take advantage of the level platform boarding um, on the A line, so drove straight to a park and ride on the A line and went. Um, out to DIA there. It's it's my preferred way of of um, traveling to the airport, and the the customer experience there was quite good. Uh, the train was, you know, probably half full, and um, it was as I've experienced every time I've ridden it. It was on time, and um, we didn't have any problems. So it was a very positive experience. Um, I, I guess I'm going to say that it, it's a little bit difficult in our what I call transit desert out here in District N to access bus service conveniently in order to um, make another transfer to the light rail. But I'm, I'm continuing to advocate for that in this area. So thank you for your question, Richard. Thank you, uh, Director. We've got a question submitted online from Caleb. Uh, he asked, how does RTD define equity? Bill? You might be muted. We're not hearing you. Sorry. Sorry, Roger. Right. Yeah, you were actually correct. Um, so what I'll say to that is that, you know, a couple of different aspects of equity. One is, as, as a part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, we have requirements under Title VI to look and do a fair equity um, and um, service equity analysis to making sure that those people, low income and minority populations, are not being disproportionately or disparately impacted by any fair change or um, service change that we do. And so we, we do that on a regular basis. That's one way to look at equity. Another way to look at it is that what we're trying to do is to making sure that people who have who want access to our system um, don't have any barriers to that access and looking at, you know, whether that be financial, whether that be um, other types of access, whether it be, you know, disabilities or other things. So we look at it more broadly in that respect in terms of looking at those who want access to our system but see barriers in their way of doing it. All right, thank you, Bill. Here are the results of our second survey question. We asked, do you believe that RTD fares should be made, should be more affordable even if it results in less service? 50% said no, 42% said you weren't sure, and 8% said yes. Thanks for uh, providing that input. And we'll have a couple more questions later in the call. For those of you that joined late, good evening. This is a live virtual telephone town hall hosted by the Regional Transportation District. I'm Roger, your moderator, and we are talking with District N Director Peggy Catlin. We also have agency staff joining us to answer questions 
As a reminder, you can press star three on your telephone keypad if you would like to ask a question or submit questions online um, at rtd-denver.com forward slash town hall. Let's go next to Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff, you're live. Um, I think this is the Jeff that you're talking to. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, sir, go ahead. Oh, okay. All right, I live in Coal Creek Canyon and uh, RTD service was discontinued several years ago. And uh, right when it was discontinued, um, the, the number of people living up here just exploded. So now we have just a ton of traffic on Highway 72, which is Coal Creek Canyon. And um, we'd sure love to have that service back. And I wondered how, how can that happen? Who'd like to take that question? Yeah, How about I can start? Manus? Go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. Thank you for thank you for your question. Um, I, the best way to reach uh, to let us know, you know, that you want we'd like the service back is to, you know, contact us through like. So I'm I'm the service I'm the service planner. I work for service development. Um, the best way to notify us that you would like the service uh, back is to contact contact us at um, either our email at service dot change at rtd hyphen denver dot com or to give us a call at three zero three two nine nine six five zero three or you could also submit a customer customer comment form at uh, www dot rtd hyphen denver dot com forward slash customer hyphen comments. All right, thank you. Let's go to a question now from Casey. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. So I um, wanted to jump back to the uh, safety concerns. I've been a daily rider on the W line for the past three months, and I've noticed it's kind of a hotbed of a lot of the illicit activities, drug use, and um, the like. I was just wondering, I've never seen really any security officers on that line. Um, I was wondering if there might be any plans to sort of extend the um, security force out that way, kind of. Um, yeah. Oh, this, uh, Thank you, Kate. Yeah, so um, so the W line actually has been getting the most uh, police services and the most police response. Um, we know a lot of people were utilizing that and, and uh, you know, the customers were calling in and then we also have been working with Lakewood PD. So we actually have been doing uh, several um, operations. Uh, we just did one on last Wednesday at Wadsworth station. And we, you know, on that one there, we, we made about 13 arrests. Uh, for individuals that were, were utilizing, um, you know, drugs out out in the open. So, um, like with PD, we're actually working with them right now to see. As I mentioned earlier, we have secondary employment with Denver, Aurora, and and uh, Thornton. We used to have it with Lakewood PD back uh, before COVID. And when COVID hit, we had to do some uh, budget um, tightening, and we we um, broke off our 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 uh, secondary employment with them. But we are trying to bring that back. We're actually in, in talks with our with the uh, city's legal team, and hopefully we could uh, you know come to some type of agreement and start that again here um, in the next few weeks. Um, but like I said, Lakewood PD has been a great partner, and we have done about two or three operations with their police department, and we continue to do operations there. You know, again, if you download the Transit Watch app and you let us know times that you're riding and the incidents you're seeing, that is how we're deploying our resources. Um, so you know. Please let us know exactly when you're seeing these incidents, what incidents you're seeing, and I, I will tell you that we are working very hard to try to get our officers to every location as we possibly can to mitigate these, these incidents. All right, great questions. Uh, if you'd like to ask one, just press star three. Our uh, operators are standing by. We're going to listen, uh, hear from Kelly next. Go ahead, Kelly. Hi, uh, I live up in Conifer, and we're experiencing um, an increase in fatalities on 285. 
and the traffic is just getting heavier and heavier. Uh, are there any plans or research being investigated up here to expand RTD so we can get some of these cars off of the highway and, and hopefully save some lives? Um, thank you, Kelly, for that comment. And yes, Conifer is in our district, and I frequently go up 285 to the Conifer Town Hall to participate. We were successful in reinstating um, both the CV and the EV routes to Conifer and Evergreen, three trips in the morning and three trips in the evening during the peak. Um, and the way that we can hope to increase service is to increase ridership. So I, I just encourage um, all of your neighbors and friends who are concerned about um, the 285 traffic to consider trying RTD and um, using the services because then we can justify additional service uh, at, up in the mountain communities. But perhaps um, our service planners would like to address that a little bit more specifically. Sarah, sure. thank you, Director Tatlin. Um, yes, we have uh, we, we did reinstate uh, three trips in the morning um, inbound and outbound for both the EV and CV in the morning and the evening, respectively. Um, unfortunately, we did, currently the ridership on those routes do not um, currently warrant more trips, uh, which would be great. But also that and also the operator shortage that are facing um, prevent us from. Uh, implementing more trips on both those routes. Um, yeah, that, that, so we, we, uh, as much as we'd like to, that, so those are some um, barriers in um, increasing more service in Conifer and Evergreen at the moment. All right, thank you. Before we move to our next topic, let's ask our third survey question. Again, just use your telephone keypad to enter the number of your response. Here it is, what factor would increase your likelihood of taking RTD services the most. Press one for more affordable fares. Press two for a system that you feel safer on. Press three for more frequent bus and train service. Or press four for more service coverage in your area. And while you're recording your vote, I'm going to ask uh, Director Catlin to introduce our next topic. So thing, Roger, thank you. Um, I think what we want to talk about now is our workforce and, and what we're doing to improve that situation. As you heard just moments ago that we really do have a challenge with operator shortage right now, but we're, we're really working on, on trying to improve that. We have a workforce of over 3,500 employees, and that includes not only bus and rail operators, but mechanics, administrative staff, planners, as you see here, and many more. And we just completed a strategic plan and identified strategic priorities. And among them, or one of the most important one is employee ownership. And by employee ownership, we wish we want to attract and retain a highly skilled and engaged workforce. So uh, our general manager and CEO often says, we are people who move people. And to help keep our transit system reliable, we are hiring for key positions. So if you or a friend or family member are looking for a meaningful career in public service, consider applying for one of RTD's open positions. We're hiring across the agency, including bus and rail operators, um, tech, body shop technicians, mechanics, and many others. And a lot of these are eligible for a $4,000 signing bonus, which is pretty Exciting. So as you can see, we're doing everything we can to try and attract a really quality workforce. Director, what are some other benefits you would like to uh, share uh, for those considering join, joining the RTD team? Well, Roger, you know, we um, just completed a new collective bargaining agreement that was signed by the Amalgamated Transit Union, ATU Local 1001 and RTD. We finished that in February of 2022. And it really offers significant additional benefits to employees with positions covered under the union. 
There are competitive wages, education allowances, excellent retirement savings plan, and paid in-house training programs, to name, to name a few. Um, RTD offers extensive training programs where you can learn to operate a train. Or if you're interested in being a bus operator, we'll help you get a commercial driver's license or CDL. That, if you have to pay for that yourself, that's quite expensive. So that's a pretty big benefit right out of the chute. Individuals interested in joining RTD are encouraged to review open positions on RTD's website. And once again, that's www.rtd-denver.com forward slash careers. And if you don't see a position that you might be interested in right now, check back often. We always have something new. Um, Roger, would you like to take a couple more questions now? Let's do that. But first, I'm going to share the results with our, uh, of our third survey question. We asked what factor would increase your likelihood of taking RTD services the most. And 42% uh, said more frequent bus or train service. 33% said a safer system. 25% said more service in my area. Uh, thank you. We'll have one final question in uh, a few minutes, but we're going to go back to your questions. This, this the next question is kind of relevant, uh, given 33% uh, of you that would like a safer system. Let's uh, hear from Randy next. Randy, go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my uh, call. I, you know, I really wanted to piggyback on um, the lady earlier because I usually take the uh, the W line from either Wads or um, or the Federal Center, and then downtown to the airport at least three or four times a month. And it is absolutely scary. There's so much riffraff going on at that wide station. And even when you get downtown, it's, it's, it's very scary to go through that gauntlet, if you will, to get to the, uh, the train to the airport. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I heard earlier that they've done some work to clean up the, uh, the um, downtown station which I kind of noticed that on the way back this Sunday. It wasn't as bad as it was on the way Friday. But I did want to recognize a couple of um, the uh, employees uh, on the way back from the airport on Sunday, on Monday, excuse me. The, the, there, was a, uh, there was a representative um, that stayed on the security, I should say, stayed on the uh, train all the way from the airport to downtown, which made me feel good. So. Anyway, safety is my number one concern. It's just, it's hopefully it'll increase and, you know. Thank you. I know, I, hey, real quick, I know that there was a Rockies game, so maybe that might have a, it may have an impact on the, on the security anyway. So thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Steve, do you want to respond to that? Uh, no, I, you know, I'm, again, I appreciate it, and and we do know we do know that you know some of the hot spots, like you said, Wadsworth Station. That's a, that's a huge one because um, whenever we ask people to leave our our platforms or the parking garages, then they walk over to that gas station that's right on the corner. Then they come right back, and so again, we we have been real really reaching out. Um, I told you earlier we have the impact teams. One is a community engagement impact team. That sergeant has been reaching out to every police department that we go through. We go through eight counties and 40, you know, 42 cities. Um, so he's been pretty busy trying to reach out and tell them what we could do to provide assistance, you know, within our security division, but also the assistance we need. Um, you know, this is obviously a situation that um, RTD is trying to tackle, but we can't tackle it alone. You know, we need help from every, you know, every city municipal agency as well as the county sheriff's departments. Um, they've been really, really uh, great partners, um, but you know it's it's obviously a situation that's a lot bigger. It's happening nationwide, um, but we are trying to do what we can, uh, you know, and, and be visible. But again, the Transit Watch app, I, uh, I I keep reiterating how important it is. We use all that data from when you're calling in to know whether to deploy the right resources, and I promise you, we are trying every effort. We're thinking outside the box with the mental health conditions, the homeless outreach coordinators. Uh, whatever we can do to, to, to try to make sure your ride is as safe as it can be. Steve, I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Gail called in, but she did not want to ask the question live. She's specifically asking about security in the parking rides. We've got a lot of territory to cover. Uh, do we have cameras? Are there, are there lots patrolled? How are we 
uh, providing security in the park and rides? Yeah, so um, that, that's, a, that's another great question. That's something we get a lot as well. Um, we do, you know, certain, certain, some park and rides have cameras, some don't. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we try to put cameras everywhere we possibly can, but some of those were built before um, we were able to, you know, run certain wires and everything we need. Um, so we supplement with our mobile uh, security patrols. So every our security uh, team has mobile um, security officers where they, where they, you know, they ride around in the vehicles and they go through the park and rides. Um, that's part of their daily duties. Um, I know right now the issue is catalytic converters. That, that's a big issue. I mean, it's gone up 500% nationwide since 2018. Uh, you know, it takes less than 30 seconds to cut a catalytic converter, and people get hundreds of dollars for it when they sell it to a, uh, a recyclable metal shop. So, you know, we are working, again, with the local agencies. There's a lot more information coming out. Um, RTD has developed, we're, we're in the process of printing them, um, say, uh, security tips in regards to how to protect your catalytic converter, where to park, you know, um, you know, there's devices out there to, uh, cover your catalytic converter and make sure it's not cut. Um, but, you know, like I said, we, we continue again with the outside police departments. Uh, we had a situation uh, recently at Table Mesa and we've, we've, you know, we've done a lot of work there and the amounts of, of thefts have gone down dramatically. So we continue reaching out to the police agencies, finding out which of our parking lots are there are victimized the most, and then we work to try to come up with plans with them to uh, you know to try to make sure we we provide high visibility in those spots. Can right, I interject, Mrs. Director Catlin? Um, uh, will that information be put up on the website for how to protect your you know strategies for parking and that sort of thing? Um, I think that would be really helpful information for our customers to know um, that information, what you're doing. Um, I I experienced an unfortunate incident at the um, Peoria Park and Ride, and um, our car was broken into, and there is footage. But what we were told from the Aurora Police Department was that they just are too busy to respond to those types of crimes. So I think any anything that we can do to show our customers how they can be safer and protect their themselves and their vehicles at our parking rides would be really helpful. Yeah, director, great question. And and we are we're right now in the in the process of branding it. Uh the information um a lot of police agencies are utilizing the same information. So um it's gonna be both in English as well as Spanish. And as soon as we get it uh, branded by the marketing department, we are going to make them into cards that, you know, for when we go out to um, community engagement uh, outreach events. And we'll also, uh, we will also be putting it on our website to show, um, again, tips on, on prevention on regards to theft, as well as catalytic converters. Uh, you know, that's right now the biggest crime that's out there just because it's a, such a a quick crime to be able to do and in a monetary gain for the, the few seconds that it takes. Um, but real quickly, the, the most important thing, and that's, you know, what's going to be expressed on there is, you know, people ask, Oh, should I paint my catalytic converter orange? Should I do this? Should I do that? The best thing you could do is if, if you're able to uh, engrave, have a metal engraver or maybe ask around somebody that could assist you. If you're able to put your car VIN number and engrave it on that catalytic converter somewhere, um, just because if, if a vehicle is stopped or something stopped or a suspicious incident and somebody has five or ten catalytic converters in their in their trunk, we can run that VIN number and find out the owner of the vehicle based off of that. You know, someone painting it orange or yellow, we have no idea who painted it orange or yellow. So, you know, to try to figure out a victim in regards to that is going to be really, really difficult. But if you could put some type of identifying marker on there, like a, you know, your VIN number or even a phone number, that's probably the best thing you could do to assist the police department's finding out who's been victimized. Thank right, you. That's thank very you. helpful. Uh, very, uh, very interesting information. Uh, we have just a few minutes left. You still have time to press star three and get in line to ask a question. But for now, it's time to talk about Reimagine RTD, the agency's plan for the next five years. I'm going to ask Bill Soroy to come back and give us uh, an update. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, thanks, Roger. Um, you know, at RTD, we do strive to be a strong community partner um, and provide value to our customers as well as the broader metro region. And so, you know, as part of our strategic plan, one of our, our first strategic board 
priority um, is customer value. And reimagine RTD really fits underneath that um, because it really looks at how do we create more value for our customers. Um, for those of you who don't know, reimagine is a planning process that we started almost three years ago to address kind of what's next for RTD. Um, we've kind of been interrupted as we've gone on um, related to the COVID pandemic, um, which has really limited kind of our approach. Um, we were having challenges before COVID hit um, that exacerbated things. And, and it really to address some of the things I think that we heard um, earlier, which was, you know, the desire for more service, we, we, we looked at the we imagine as an opportunity to really create more efficient system. Um, many of you may know we, we, we had a drastic reduction in service um, when the pandemic hit in April 2020, and we cut service by almost 40%. Uh, we've been building back since that point, and reimagine kind of make, puts a finer point on through our system optimization plan, which really looks to balance kind of our fiscal and financial needs with, um, you know, our opportunities for more service. and really um, looks at things like another thing that I think you've heard about tonight that was really impacting our ability to have uh, put out services, our workforce issues. And we're, again, we're working on those. We, Director Catlin talked about the um, CBA that was just signed. We're also really excited about that. So the, the system optimization plan is really focused like on that shorter term. What, what can we do for service over the next five years? Um, we also have a mobility plan for the future, which is really a longer term strategy, the 2050 what things can we do between now and 2050 to kind of better meet the, the region's mobility needs. Um, so the update is that we, we've just kind of wrapped up kind of the, the final draft of the um, system optimization plan, which we plan to bring to our board um, for consideration in July. Um, so we're hoping that the board will look at that and think it's a value and, and, and adopt it as kind of our path forward for the next five years for service. Um, we did receive a lot of comments and we put an initial draft at the beginning of the year and received a lot of comments and unsurprised not surprisingly everybody wanted more but unfortunately given our financial and our workforce issues um, we're not able to kind of provide all the service everybody needs but we did make some changes um, based on those comments and, and we're, we're submitting those revisions to the board and so we're hoping that you know again we can use this as a guide for the future um, there are, um, you know, other things that we're doing as part of the mobility plan for the future in terms of looking at what our role is in terms of um, as a mobility integrator, integrating services um, related to transit, transit being a backbone, but things like how do we integrate with bikes and scooters and, you know, have make, you know, travel more efficient through apps and other things. Um, we also looking at our, our financial situation and, and, you know, what are our financial needs and I'll just say this, that, you know, we have some challenges in the long-term future that we have to address. Um, so, we're, again, we're, we're, we're hoping, uh, we plan to, in July, um, sub submit the SOP for adoption, and along with the mobility plan for the future, which will kind of be that guide um, for the board to consider um, as we move into the future. So with that, Roger, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, uh, Bill. Uh, you know, we're trying to deliver the best service we can, but Manus, I subscribe to uh, RTD service alerts, and sometimes there are cancellations uh, of my route. What is RTD doing to mitigate these cancellations? Yeah, thanks, thanks Roger. Um, RTD is doing its best to ensure that all the scheduled trips run, but when a schedule adjustment uh, needs to be made, we try to make it as uh, least disruptive as possible. Um, when making real-time adjustments, we do not uh, cancel back-to-back -back trips, and we try not to cancel the final trip of the evening so that people can get back home, um, you know, on the last trip or the last route, even if the other runs were canceled. Um, I encourage all customers to enroll in the service alerts for the buses and the, the bus routes and the train um, lines that they uh, use most frequently. Um, additionally, we have recently updated our service alert system, uh, which you may not have been aware of. So uh, now when a customer signs up, they can be, they, they are notified via text or email in real time when a schedule adjustment is made. 
And uh, customers can also use the RTD Next Ride and Trip Planner functions on our website to plan alternative trips in the case of a cancellation. Uh, great, thank you for that information. All right, we have our last survey question for the evening. Again, if you're on the phone, use your telephone keypad to enter your response. And if you're online, click or enter, type in your response. Here it is. How satisfied are you with RTD services overall? Press one for very satisfied. Press two for satisfied. Press three for somewhat dissatisfied. Press four for very satisfied. Go ahead and uh, record your votes. We'll share those results at the end of the call. And Director, what else would you like to share with the audience about RTD or your district specifically? Um, well, I just wanted to say that we we have um, service on in the Southwest area, but that what I'm excited about, and, and Bill Soroy alluded to it, that we have an opportunity to perhaps expand some of the flex ride areas for areas that aren't served by fixed routes. <coughs> Excuse me, particularly in District N. Um, a quick update though on our transition to account-based ticketing. Over the summer, RTD is gonna be changing out ticketing validators on buses and station platforms. And ABT, as it's called, account-based ticketing, is a ticketless way of allowing people to travel on public transportation where customers simply tap or scan a secure token, such as a smart card, um, mobile device, or credit card. The new system will implement fare capping, which is a fare policy that ensures customers always pay the best fare regardless of when or how they pay for their trips. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, we're we're working really hard to try and, and increase ridership on district in district N and one opportunity we have facing us is thanks to Senate Bill one eighty, which is which the legislature created and we will have a fair free August. So this will be an opportunity for people to try out R T D for the first time at no cost. And the effort is really to um provide this service for free in an effort to increase transit ridership and get people used to writing the RTD. Um, so I would encourage you to spread the word to all your friends that August is fair free um, for RTD. That's all I have for now, Roger. Thank you, uh, Directors. You're, you're talking about fair free August. We did get a question in from uh, Sean that said, will RTD make fares free? Are we considering that, Bill or Director? I want to talk about that. Sure, this is Bill. Um, you know, we, we have heard that question a lot. I think the challenge is, you know, I, I think our our, our, um, our general manager would say it's not free, it's it's zero fares. In other words, what we would do would be zeroing out. It, fares are a fairly significant revenue source for us. Um, and, you know, we do have some challenges, I think, with totally eliminating fares. And, um, you know, we are looking at, at options for maybe potentially uh, deeper discounts or re reducing fares, but not necessarily a fare-free system. Um, I think there are some major challenges with that, uh, not the least of which is, the, is the, the revenue issue that we would have if we were to eliminate all fares. All right, thank you, Bill. Well, here are the results of our final survey question. We asked, how satisfied are you with RTD services overall? And uh, the results were really evenly split. 38% were satisfied, 38% were somewhat dissatisfied, and 25% of you were very satisfied. So we'd like to hear that um, and appreciate your input. We're gonna take a, just one more question. And uh, it came in from Stephanie, uh, who said, is there any, how can I request a flex ride route? Director, I know you've talked about the service is, is not what it, we'd like it to be up in, in your district. Uh, uh, maybe, Manis, you could talk a little bit about flex rides and how we consider where those might go. Sure. So as part of the reimagine our TD process, um, some areas of the district that have been identified as um, you know, potential areas for alternative service delivery outside of the fixed route services that we provide, 
which and uh, this you know the the alternative service in this case may include sex rights. So starting in 2023, I believe, RTE is going to make money available for partnerships with um, local jurisdictions to bring projects to RTD. Um, and submitted projects will be uh, evaluated and potentially implemented. All right, thank you uh, very much. Well, Director, we've come to the end of our hour. Uh, it's been a good conversation. Do you have any closing remarks? Yes, thank you, Roger. First of all, I want to thank all of you who called in tonight and for asking such good and thoughtful questions. Um, this is one of 15 separate um, telephone town halls. I've listened to many of them and intend to listen to others in other districts. Um, there are a variety of interests across the district, and even though we advocate for issues in our particular district, it's important to know that we do represent the entire RTD region. So I'm looking forward to not only listening for these telephone town halls, but also to see the compilation of some of these survey results and, and really to get a, a much more holistic uh, view of what is happening in the RTD region. But again, thank you very, very much for your comments and questions, and I wish you all a good evening. Thank you, uh, Director. We are sorry if we did not get to your question tonight, but you can still leave us a message, question, or comment. Uh, just stay on the line and you'll be directed to a voicemail system. On behalf of Director Catlin, our panelists tonight, and the hardworking public servants at RTD, thank you for taking part in this evening's conversation. We uh, wish you a great night. Good night.